It's pretty popular today to tension with the Buckingham method, which is just a line grip and hangover, creating a three to one. But what happens when you put six of them in a row, creating the Buckingham Palace? Check it out on this episode of How Not to Highline. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks and welcome to my gear room. Recently, we just had a couple slackliners living with us for a while, and Freedy, Cameron, Kyle, and Robert were all staying with us. And so we had a bunch of hangovers and line grips, and also a bunch of grips for the slack snap stuff that we're testing. So I thought, what would happen if you put them all together in order to create a three to one on a three to one on a three to one on a three infinitely until uh, it doesn't work? I presumed that we would be able to break something considering it exponentially gets stronger. So check out our journey as we learn how it works and how it doesn't. Now keep in mind, one of our dynos was only pounds of force and our other ones were only in kilonewtons. So I'm doing a lot of math in my head. It's mostly accurate, but you'll get the gist of what we're trying to do. So check it out. This is a three to one and I'm going to see how tight I can make my slack run here. Okay, 0.86 kilonewtons, which is around 200 pounds of force. And 1.26 kilonewtons, which is maybe 300 pounds of force. And I don't have anything on this because I feel like it's kind of whatever that's going to be. So we have a 3 to 1 on a 3 to 1, which is a 9 to 1. So let's find out. Whoa, how much force? I'm not going to put more than 200 pounds of force on this um, at any time. I'm always going to pull the same here, but let's find out what happens on the other parts. 700 pounds of force. 3.14 kilonewtons here. What, what is that over there? 650 right now. So I have less than 3 kilonewtons over there, but the peak force on this is 3.1 and I only put on 0.76 kilonewtons here. Um, that's like with me dynamically pulling. So uh, let's pull a little bit more. Oh. Yeah, 0.94 kilonewtons, that's pretty good for my middle finger, right? So uh, 3.78 kilonewtons, and what's yours? 800. 800 pounds of force over there. So. Shall we add another layer? What do we have here? A three to one, a three to one with another dyno, and another three to one is 27 to one, okay? And now we have a dyno on all these. So let's see what happens when I pull this 27 to one. I'm not even pulling hard. And here is the unfiltered negative side of this. I have to reset it now. So let's cut the camera because it could take a while. This is not a lightweight pulley system because it takes so much goddamn webbing in order to zigzag. And it's only three stages. We're going to put three or four more on. All right. So that right there is as tight as I make my 50 meter that I long line in this park at. It's about 1,100 pounds of force or five-ish kilonewtons. Let's find out what those have on. So 172 pounds of force or 0.76 kilonewtons here. 1.84 kilonewtons here. So a little bit more than double of that one. And 4.62 kilonewtons here, which is that's about five kilonewtons over there. Is that still 1,100? 900. Oh, it settled back down to 900. Um, so this is as tight as you would ever make this line, especially only at uh, 25 meters long. Shall we add another stage? This is so impractical, but so beautiful. That is four stages of a three to one, which gives us an 81 to one. 27 to 1, I should technically, with 100 pounds of force here, get 2,700 pounds of force over there, and we're only getting 1,100 pounds of force, less than half, with hangovers. So let's find out. Technically, at an 81 to 1, I should get 8,000 pounds over there, 
If I lost half, 4,000. If I lost a little less, 3,000. Let's find out. 1,200, I guess we're going to have to scoot it way out there. Okay, we reset it. Okay, so this one's only seen 0.9 kilonewtons, 2.1 kilonewtons, and 5.2. So we got more here. We're losing a lot in friction, and I can't get the distance I need. And what's our peak at we had? It was 14. 14's our highest? Yeah. And 1,400 pounds of force over there. There's only like 7 kilonewtons. Um, and this is five, so it's two more kilonewtons and I'm getting on that, which it should be, it's a three to one. But you can you could see over there like we had a lot of uh, friction. But now my distance is an issue, especially if I add two more stages. So we have a problem. Uh, I've got two more of these and no more line. So, not quite sure what we're gonna do there. And then slide this forward and tighten. And we had to clip this because there's already tension on this. We're just, we have no tail. There's so much slack you have to pull out of. This is a 75 foot line. This is a 200 foot piece, 250 foot piece. Three people pulling. My 15 to one pulley system never gets that high. We have hangovers on every single point. So we have no fric friction from running out of hangovers. 0.86 kilonewtons, 0.74, don't understand that, 1.32. So we really don't have that much force on these yet. Two thousand three, two thousand five to two thousand seven, two thousand eleven. This got popular. And then 2018 is this is the tension we like now. <laughs> the history of slacklining. Yeah. Yeah. You want some help? Nope. nope. I want you to film the struggle. <sighs> struggle is real. Yeah, right? For how excited I was about this. Fuck it. Fuck it, I can't break something when I want to. You weren't trying to break something. You break. By the way, go to churchslacklife.com if you haven't been yet. It's where we share the stove. Snap! What's it at? 1650. Fuck it. You wanna rig another one? <laughs> No, <laughs> but we have to because I got all these extra hangovers because Kyle thought it'd be smart to buy five hangovers for a pulley system. But he uses a five to one, not this. This is horrible. So what is this? Is this a one, two, three, four, five? What's five times three to the fifth power? A 243 to one. It's not like I need to add another multiplier. I can't even pull. I'm not even struggling pulling. I'm not even putting 50 pounds on this thing. All right. So here's spider silk. Probably already at 1,000 pounds. Um, and we have five stages. One, two, three, four, five. Forty-three, fifty. Twenty-three. Oh, 2350. <laughs> uh, 2350 is about 10 kilonewtons, maybe 11. So, so you can see how the main line doesn't want to like go through the weblock, but add enough force, it eventually does. 
2750. And that's the creaky we hear. Don't put your hands near tight webbing. Don't be a dumbass. <laughs> Holy shit, that scared me. <laughs> okay. Scared you, scared me. <laughs> I don't really want to get near this. It's, uh, it's at 50% of its braking strength. So the problem is you have to reset the bitch. Which means I could take one of these extra grips I have. Maybe remove this one, attach the grip to here, and do it like a temporary grigri. That'd be cool. And then I could reset. I would have to grigri it in the middle layers to reset these ones that like get too close too quickly. But this is an episode that's anticlimactic because I don't think I'm gonna get near this. Should we like? Should we just push it all the way there as we can and and then pull? <laughs> yeah, because it's not dark yet. Okay, so this is interesting. 1.88 kilonewtons at stage three. I was not even putting 100 pounds of force on it. 4.77, that's 1,000 pounds of force. Was not even putting 50 pounds of force on it. And the 100, I'm sorry, 12.0 kilonewtons. Um, this is only rated for eight kilonewtons. So uh, yay for G4s. We're back down to 900 pounds of force from it settling. This is with one less three to one. 3300? 3250 pounds. 32, 50 pounds of force. 33, 34. I'm really concerned about that line grip breaking. I don't really want to stand in zone. All right, what's 35, my max? 35? 36, 50. All right, 36, is good enough for me. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Safety third. This is our third test. What's it read now? Because uh, a lot of it was line grip. 1050. Wow. There's so much stretch in this that it went down to 1,050 from 3,600 pounds of force. And the dinos, 2.48 kilonewtons on the third stage. Six. Damn, six kilonewtons on the snatch. Go snatch. And the line grip looks okay, and it was 15.3 kilonewtons. This is an eight kilonewton G4. So, huh. Huh. I'm good. I don't, my curiosity is fine. Unless I got to pull it with my van. So it was sort of anticlimactic in that we didn't break anything. However, we did get to uh, twice the force this thing can handle. And the G5s, the ones you can buy now, are actually 15 kilonewtons, which is pretty much what I put on there. Um, but this is the G4, it's lighter and only eight kilonewtons. The first webbing we used was Arrow 2 from Balance Community, which is not that stretchy, but it does have stretch. And then we jumped over to the spider silk that has almost no stretch, which helped us get the results we were able to get on that. Now, this is a great method to tension your high lines when you use one of them. And if your friend also has one of these, maybe one of these, you technically can do a nine to one without having to use a lot of webbing. But obviously, as you saw, it got pretty ridiculous the more we added. So this, by the way, is technically called the Buckingham method. Mostly I hear that in Europe. Here in California, we call it the line grip hangover method. But hey, that's what it is, right? So when I saw that we had six hangovers and six grips, I thought, hey, that could be the Buckingham Palace. And if you do tension this way, you have to have a soft release in the system so you can unravel the slack line when you're done because to reverse Buckingham method detention, um, it is possible, but it is a bit of work. Now there is a chance that you could come across six grips and six hangovers and be tempted to over tension your slack lines, making them dangerous. Therefore, you shouldn't slack line.